some revision notes for year 13 on linear motion. So momentum, it's measured in kilogram meters per second and it has to do with the quantity of motion in an object and it's a vector quantity. So direction is important. A change in momentum usually happens when there's an unbalanced force acting and a change in momentum can be shown by either a change in speed, direction or change in mass. And the way we calculate change in momentum is final momentum minus initial momentum. And this is the one with the impulse. So force acting for a short amount of time will produce a change in momentum. You can also calculate the change in momentum from the area under a force time graph. And the only thing when you're doing these questions on change in momentum, remember you're using vector subtraction, which is to add the opposite. Okay, now whenever there are no external forces, momentum is conserved and this takes and, and this is used in collisions and explosions. It simply means that the total momentum before collision or explosion equals total momentum after. And when we say external force, external forces are like gravity, friction, accelerating. So if they talk about external force. What are internal forces? These are forces that one object exerts on another in a closed system. A closed system is one there is no external force. Moving on to center of mass, this is a point where all the mass is concentrated on an object and if you have two systems, the center of mass of a system of two objects sorry, if you have two objects that form a system, a closed system, then the center of mass is f found by joining the center of mass of the two objects. It's like an imaginary line, like a seesaw, and this is like a pivot. So this mass, mass times this distance equals that mass times that distance. So that's one way. The other way is by using a reference point. Sometimes this method may be easier. The reference point is anything that is not moving, like a bank. And this is an example where there's some water and a plank floating on the water. And so the center of mass of this whole system is always taken with reference to the reference point. So if this is the distance of the center of mass of the system from the reference point, this dot. This is the center of mass of the plank from the reference point, And this is the center of mass of the girl from the reference point. Okay. And then the position of the center of mass can be found from this formula. Moving on to the velocity of the center of mass. So if momentum is conserved and there are no external forces, the center of the velocity of the center of mass will stay a constant. That means it moves at constant speed in a straight line. If it's moving or if it's stationary, it doesn't move. And the velocity of the center of mass is given by this formula. Moving on to circular motion. Circular motion needs an unbalanced force. There are two types of circular motion that you need to be aware of in level three, which is horizontal circular motion as well as vertical. Looking at horizontal um, circular motion, for any sort of circular motion, an unbalanced force acts at 90 degrees to the tangential velocity and the unbalanced force is your centripetal force, which is always acting towards the center of the object. Now, because the unbalanced force and velocity are at 90 degrees to each other, the unbalanced force has no component in the direction of motion. So it does not speed up the object. What it does do is changes the direction. Two formulae associated is for centripetal acceleration and for centripetal force. So whenever there's an unbalanced force, it will result in acceleration, which acts in the same direction as a centripetal force. Now, what provides centripetal force is if it's a car on a road, it'll be friction between the tires and the road. If it's planets going around the sun, it's gravity. If you're whirling a string, a ball on a string over your head, then it's a tension in the spring. Okay. And if V is not, speed is not given for this one, then you can find out speed by, at constant speed is distance over time. Distance around a circle is 2 pi r. Time taken to go around a circle once is the period. Moving on to conical pendulum. Conical pendulum goes about in a circle. So this, this ball goes around a horizontal circle. And the angle it makes with the vertical is theta. 
the force is acting on the mass is gravity force and tension force you can resolve the tension into two components so the vertical component of the tension force balances the gravity force and the horizontal component of the tension force provides the centripetal force so the vertical component is ft cos theta is equal to mg and the horizontal component ft sine theta is equal to mv squared over r okay moving on to banked curves very similar to conical pendulum so if the surface was flat and it was a curved um, pathway then the forces acting on something going in a circle is your gravity and reaction force are at 180 degrees opposite each other because they're both at right angles to the surface okay in this particular case where the surface is horizontal so the only unbalanced force is friction that acts towards the center of the circle and friction provides your centripetal force in order to do great now the thing is we can't depend on friction to provide your centripetal force because you could have times when the road is wet or slippery or the tires are all worn out so in that case um, circular roads are banked so the edge is raised and so the way that we use this is because um, so the reaction force and gravity force are no longer in a straight line gravity always acts vertically down and reaction is always at 90 degrees to the surface so we resolve the reaction force into vertical and horizontal components the vertical component of reaction force equals gravity force so that's what you see here and the horizontal component of the reaction force provides centripetal force now greater the angle of banking so that's how these two are different this is a bigger angle compared to that bigger the value for sine theta and therefore greater speeds can be done now you don't have to actually use this formula to find out what the speed is there's an easy way so the easy formula this is not given to you so fc is mv squared over r which is fr sine theta and fg is mg which is fr cos theta so when you're looking at dividing one thing by the other the m cancels out the fr cancel out and you're left with v squared over rg is tan theta or v squared is rg tan theta so this is a useful one moving on to gravitation so all objects that have mass exerts an attractive gravity force gravitation force to every other mass and this is newton's law of gravity universal gravitation so there are two of them so there's the gravitational field strength which is d gm over d squared or gm over r squared g is a universal gravitational constant here's your value and gravitational force is gmm by r squared or g m m by d squared m is one mass this is the other mass now for satellites going around the centripetal force is provided by gravity force so this is the formula for centripetal force this is your fg and so when you can cancel the m's and one of the r's cancel off this gives you the orbital speed of a satellite going around okay where m is the mass of the larger body so the orbital speed does not depend on the mass of the satellite it only depends on the radius of orbit moving on to vertical circular motion so in horizontal circular motion you had the size of the centripetal force was towards at right angles to the motion and gravity didn't have an effect because gravity acts vertically down and there's no component in the horizontal direction but for vertical circular motion because it's vertical gravity has an effect so at the bottom of the circle these are your two forces so there's gravity force and there's reaction force and reaction force will have to be bigger than gravity force because it's a difference between those two that provide centripetal force at the top of the circle that's when you feel weightless if it's going slow enough not too slow um, where F fr is much smaller than fg and your centripetal force is found by adding the two the minimum speed at the top of the circle is when your reaction force reduces to zero and all your centripetal force is provided by gravity force so when you equate these two you end up with v squared equals rg 
Now the feeling of weight depends on the size of the reaction force. So if you look at this vertical circle, reaction force is bigger at the bottom of the circle. So this is where you feel heavier, at the bottom of the circle. Moving on to energy conservation and vertical circular motion, provided there are no energy losses um, in the form of heat due to friction. So this is a loop-the-loop, -loop, a roller coaster uh, thing. So let's say when you're at the top of when you're at the top of this big hill, um, all the energy that you have is gravitational potential energy. This is the height of the big hill. When you come from the top hurtling down to the bottom, all that gravitational potential energy is converted to kinetic energy and then you continue moving over on this loop. But the height of this loop is much less than that height. And this is because at the top, you're doing two things. You're moving, but you're not moving as fast. You're moving slower. So the it has two forms of energy, gravitational potential and kinetic. So when you're equating this and this, that's how you find out. So what we're trying to find out, the connection between this height and that radius. Okay, so that's a gravitational potential energy right at the top. This is your gravitational potential energy at the top of this hill so it's mg and instead of h that's twice radius that's the height and this is your half mv squared but v squared equals rg so you get mrg so you cancel the mg right through and you end up with h is two and a half times the radius so that's all of literature